uh, I would say it's, it's a very interesting time. Um, the 20th century for the Mennonite Church in North America was really a century of institution building. Mm -hmm. there, was, um, there was a time at the end of, world, or of the Civil War in the 1870s and 1880s when it seemed like the Mennonite Church, as it was known up until then, was falling apart. Mm -hmm. uh, westward movement, not much by way of glue that held these communities together, not much of an intellectual or theological center. And then, well, we created mission boards, and we created Mennonite uh, Central Committee, and we created Mennonite Mutual Aid, and we created Mennonite Education. We, we, we created institutions that served to link the resources of congregations with the needs of the world, with the and, and, and were mediators right. uh, with the broader world, and that served the church enormously well, I would say, for most of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. We're now at a place where all of these institutions are in the midst of some profound internal changes. Mm -hmm. I don't think a group can survive without institutions. You will have institutions mm -hmm. of some form, but what shape and form mm -hmm. the new, that new clue is going to be, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I think that electronically mediated forms of communication have got to be part of it, even though I say that with a heavy heart because the theological core of this book is the incarnation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's the word made flesh, it's mm -hmm. embodied relationships, it's the lived, the visible um, expression of the invisible spirit. And I, I have a heavy heart when I talk about the future of education mm -hmm. being mediated through the internet. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think virtual relationships are different than face-to-face -face relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but um, it may be that I need to get beyond that. <laughs> 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 the power of that mm -hmm. is that for the first time we have means of connecting the Global Anabaptist mm -hmm. Church with in reciprocal ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of logistical challenges still to be worked out. Right. I mean, it, it, not everyone has access to the internet. Right. But there are ways of connecting groups mm -hmm. that are really exciting. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that will have to be mm -hmm. part of our, mm -hmm. of our future. Yeah. Um, a fuller account and a more, uh, a deeper assumption that our future is linked to the well-being mm -hmm. and the interesting dynamic realities that are happening in uh, Anabaptist groups around the world. Yeah. 227 groups in 82 countries. Wow. There are 80 schools in Paraguay. There are 400 Mennonite-related schools in the Congo. Uh, and, you know, we have operated sort of on the um, assumption mm -hmm. that it's about us, and it is, but we, there's a lot we could learn mm -hmm. and interact with. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what that is yet, <laughs> but I'm eager to find out.